with business, of course, uh, tomorrow here on France Fan Cat. Now, though, it's time for uh, the international newspapers. And here is the international press, uh, joined here on set by William Hildebrandt. Uh, William, of course, Syria dominating headlines as ever uh, over the last uh, week or so. And, of course, uh, you pulled out a piece from the British government being accused of breathtaking laxity in its arms control. That's right. It's on the front page of The Independent. And officials authorized the export to Syria of two chemicals capable of being used to make sarin gas. Now, the business secretary says he had assurances that these chemicals were only going to be used to make window frames and shower parts. But the exports were granted to an unnamed UK company in January 2012 and then revoked by the EU six months later. It should be said, however, that these chemicals were never actually shipped, but that many UKs are livid that it slipped through the government to begin with. And you found another piece in the UK, haven't you? This is uh, an MP. He's written a piece explaining why he chose to vote against a Syrian intervention. That's right. It's written by Conservative MP David Davis, and he says a motive is understandable, but there was no clear strategy. Davis compares the current situation in Syria to that of Libya two years ago, both countries plagued by civil war, an evil dictator willing to kill his own people to cling on to power. But he says the similarities end there. First of all, he says it's possible both sides of the Syrian conflict have used chemical weapons. And he also says it would be odd for Bashar al-Assad to use such weapons when he knows it's a, a, a clear reason for the, for the West to get involved. American spies have reportedly intercepted phone calls in which a, um, a Syrian commander is furious and yelling to his soldiers, why did they deploy chemical weapons? And Davis says one of the most common reasons to, to use an intervention is a humanitarian argument, but he says a punitive attack in Syria would likely cause more civilian deaths and, and, and would undermine the humanitarian argument in the first place. Yeah, brave stuff there from David Davis, dissenting, of course, with his own prime minister. It does seem that uh, global dissent, perhaps in fact, um, growing against an intervention, the papers seem to be saying that? It seems that way. The Wall Street Journal's Europe edition says Barack Obama's decision to seek congressional approval Gives, its, give, gives Washington's allies more time to argue against that military intervention. Public opinion's low here in France and in Turkey, and Italy said it won't support any intervention that doesn't also have the backing from the United Nations. Now, the paper says this rift is likely to play out at this week's G20 summit in St. Petersburg, Russia, but it's not just a case of Washington having trouble to convince its allies. There's not a whole lot of support at home in the U.S., uh, the Wall Street Journal has a poll in what, in w where we see that Americans are very wary of getting involved. It says, and the figure we want to look at here is this one, it says that 68 percent of people say the U.S. military is already too overcommitted to get involved in another, com uh, another conflict. And you've also pulled out uh, an article which is talking about uh, feedback from Syrians themselves uh, on the potential intervention. That's right. Uh, Peter Beaumont of The Guardian went to Zatari refugee camp in Jordan. That's where 120,000 Syrians have fled. He says the mood there is very bleak. Expectations were high for an imminent intervention. And one refugee there said that, quote, we thought strikes were about to start. Obama lied to us. Now, some people there have lost all hope that there can be any intervention and are returning to Syria to fight. Many feel abandoned as though the world is watching the war but not intervening to end it. Yeah, quite a contrast, of course, to how the Syrian state um, reacted, really, to Obama's decision to go to Congress on this one. That's right, Stuart. The state-run newspaper Althara, which ironically means revolution in Arabic, said Obama's move was the start of the historic American retreat. The article gloats that Obama's reluctance stems from him realizing he would suffer defeat and is losing his allies in the process. Now, Damascus is essentially saying Washington barks but doesn't bite. Uh, one Syrian minister said that Obama wants to keep brandishing the sword of aggression without setting a definite date for that aggression. Well, thanks so much. That's Will Hildebrandt uh, with the international newspapers today here on France Fan Cat. Now, coming up in focus, we've got a special report for you coming up in the next half hour, in fact. Uh, we'll be following a radical Muslim as he does uh, a bit of a U-turn, calls for free speech. And also, uh, coming up in sport, Real Madrid. They've smashed the world transfer record to sign Tottenham's Gareth Bale. The fee, very small, 100 million euros just for a footballer. All that uh, coming up for you after the break here on France Fancat. Don't go away.